so welcome to this video now in this video i wanted to kind of give a short introduction to the exoplanet archive and then show you how you can create your own plots of confirmed exoplanets basically so if you haven't come across the exoplanet archive before it's a kind of online catalog database of all of the confirmed exoplanets as well as candidates for follow-up work and anything related to exoplanets and it's all information that has been discovered from all the telescopes and stuff and you can get all of the information about known and potential exoplanets which is somewhat live as well so it gets updated quite recently so if you were to search for the exoplanet archive it should be the first one that comes up and if you click on that it will take you to the exoplanet archive so there's a lot of information here but at the very top it will tell you the number of confirmed exoplanets at some date so this has obviously not been updated to today but we've got just over 5,000 confirmed exoplanets you've got 204 confirmed by TESS as of today and then there are nearly five and a half thousand candidates for follow-up work from TESS now if you want to actually have a look at some of the recent news so this here gives you kind of a snapshot of some of the recent news of some planets that have been discovered. So this one's got four new planets and you've got just over 5,000 to let you know there's been 5,000 confirmed. And so this gives you like some of the, the, the key discoveries at the moment. There are then also some plots that show you the distribution of these exoplanets. So this is the period against the mass and you can see all the different exoplanets there. And if you want to have a look at kind of just the test data or the Kepler data, then they're all here. So again, you've got, you can just look at the confirmed test planets by clicking on here, it'll take you to the data file. Again, for Kepler, you can click on that and it gives you all this information here. But the things that you probably want to have a look at straight away is the pre-generated plots. So down here, if you click on the pre-generated plots, It will give you some plots that are somewhat live. There's obviously a bit of a delay to them and get updated periodically. But these will give you things like the orbital period of the exoplanet against other various things like its radius, its mass. So you can then start to have a look at, you know, are there any Earth-like planets there? Or what's the most common type of planets? And you can tell looking at these actually that there's a lot of very large planets that are relatively close to their star. So orbital periods, of the Earth would be about kind of here. So all of those are bigger and closer to their star. And then this is the number of planets that have been discovered so far you know, per year. And the, the colour on here denotes the discovery method. So transit is green. Now that obviously is the largest source of discoveries due to like the Kepler Space Telescope S radial velocity measurements there is the next common one but transit is obviously the most common one and there you go you've got various other types as well so you get you get a few plots that are generated automatically that you can go and have a look at and, and see but you probably want to have a look at the data yourself you can create create your own plots now I've already loaded these up because it can be a bit slow you know there's 5,000 planets and that's a lot of rows, a lot of information about each one. So if, you, if we go back to the main page, if you click on here, the planetary systems composite data, that will take you to a new page, which will look a bit like this. Now this is, well, just over 5,000 rows of data. Each one is for a planet, and each column is a bit of information about that particular planet. So you've got lots of information here, basically what the, the host was called, so the host star, the number of stars in the system. So it could be that the planet was orbiting two stars. Got one with three there. The number of planets in the system, its detection method, when it was discovered, um, the facility that did it. And then you've got all the information like the orbital period, the semi-major axis, its size of the planet, and you have got lots and lots of information here. Now you will notice not all of the columns have got data there or information and that is because depending on the way that the planet was discovered you can't always get information out 
So for example, with the radial velocity method, you can't always get the radius of the planet, but you can get the radius of the planet from the transit method. Now, if you use both techniques together, you can get a lot more information, but you can't also get the mass necessarily from the transit method. So there's, sometimes there's missing information for some planets where they can only be detected from one method and not the other. And then you have the information about the star and that, which could be quite interesting, because if we do find an Earth-like planet, what sort of star is it orbiting? Um, and actually, they're, they're very few, um, not many, if any, are around our sort of sun. So you've got all the information here. Now, if you want to actually send that to the interactive plotting tool, you can do plot table up here. Now, you can either filter that. So if I, for example, show you, let's have a look for planets orbiting two stars. So if you click two there, click enter, and what that should do is that will filter those 5,000 exoplanets to planets that are orbiting only two stars. And you can see there's actually quite a lot there already. But if we wanted to get information about how they were detected, so you want more of the scientific information of how they were detected, when, what their actual transits looked like, or the radial velocity, then you can click on the name of the planet here, and it will take you to the scientific papers where that information is available. So I've done that for this one here, and it will take you to this page. Now there's four papers here which have contributed to the information we know about this particular planet. And if you click on one of them, so you click on this one here, it will take you to the scientific paper where that planet was discovered or the information about that planet was derived. So here are all the authors that discovered it. And there's information, this is just the abstract here. And then there's a snapshot of one of the figures in the paper. And that is the transit of the planet or the planets in this particular system. So you can actually have a look at what the transit shape looked like. You can then see how they've managed to get the radius of this planet and the information. If you're interested in the actual scientific discovery in the papers, then you can go to there. If not, and you want to just do some plots, then go up here. You can basically plot all of the rows and all of the columns. So all the information that we have, or you can filter it first and then send it to the interactive plotter. So if I was to basically plot the checked and filtered one down here, this would only send the binary systems, the planets orbiting two stars, to the interactive plotter. But what I've already done, I've already opened it up with all of the data, because it takes quite a while to load, so I've, I've already done this in advance. And it should take you to a window that looks like this. So here, the default is going to be something like the orbital period against the orbital period, which is nonsensical. So what we can do is we can change the y-axis. And let's do planetary radius. So we'll do it in Earth radiuses because that makes sense. We know how big the Earth is and we can get an idea for maybe how big these planets would be. So if you change that, it should then replot it with the radius of the planet there and the orbital period here. Now, this is in days and it's 10 to the 8 and we've got planets out here. So got some planets a very long way from their star. So that's a linear scale on the axes. So we can put it on a logarithmic one because there's such a wide spread in planets, sizes, orbits, things like that, that you can have one right on the outside of the scale, which bunches the rest of it up. So if we do a log scale, this should look a bit better. So there we go, we've got a bit more information there. We can see the spread of the planets a little bit better. So around, so we're looking kind of around here for Earth-like stuff. If you wanted to, you can actually zoom in to look at stuff. So if you actually highlight it with the mouse, let it go, it will zoom in there. So it's, it's interactive. So here you've got planets with the radius of one Earth. You can see so all those planets there. You can then look at the orbital period as well. So orbital period in days. Now this is obviously a lot less than Earth, so this means they're likely going to be very close to the star. So we can run replot again. So if we go back to here, you can reset it to the, to the default. 
So orbital period, um, we can probably, let's zoom in a little bit around here. And you can see as we kind of get towards this part here, we've got less and less planets. So the more Earth-like it is, there's less of them around. So that is obviously quite interesting, but you can plot anything that you want. So if you go back to data, we can change things like the orbital period. So let's have a look what things we've got. So all of those columns we had before, we can now plot them against each other. So we could possibly have a look at the equilibrium temperature. And let's plot maybe the radius of the planet as well. So maybe we're having a look at the temperature against the size of the planet to look for something that might be Earth-like as well. So if we redraw that, So here we've got one Earth radius. So maybe if we zoom back out again, so we've got the full data set there. So where are we? So we probably want to be, well, you can see that actually a lot of them are gonna be reasonably hot. You've got a few that are fairly cool and some that are actually quite large. So you've got quite a spread again in temperatures. But if you actually change that again back to linear scale, see what that looks like. So yeah, you can see straight away there's a, an enormous spread on temperature of exoplanets there. Same again on the radius, we've got in, an enormous spread on size of these planets. So let's have a look at, so we kind of want to be, I don't know, around about here for like Earth-like ones. Just approximately, so okay, it's probably a little bit too hot actually. But again, there's not that many that are likely to be Earth like. So there's lots of information you can plot here, and you can just have a play around with it depending on what you want to have a look for. It can be a good way of looking for a specific part of the planet. Maybe you want to have a look at hot Jupiters, or super Earths, or Earth like planets, or maybe you want to have a look at the distribution of. Like terrestrial or rocky planets and settings and look at the, the general spread that you get. But the point is we've got 5,000 exoplanets now and there's an enormous variation in all of those planets. There's a, a, a very large spread on their temperatures, their sizes, their orbits, their ages, things like that. So this is a good way of just visualizing it and have a look at the sort of planets that you actually get. So uh, thank you for watching and if you enjoy then you can check out some of the other videos.